Welcome, welcome, uh, viewers. Thanks for tuning in to Drawing Comics, Conan, part 24. I'm going to continue from where I left off yesterday, where Conan is crucified on a dying tree, out in the desert. Nobody around, just a bunch of vultures waiting to swoop in and have their meal. And this is after he uh, infiltrated the cult leader uh, cult leaders meeting um, now he's set out to be punished by these crazy people so I'm pretty satisfied with the results for this panel I mean still granted there's a little bit of a difference between his face expression um, John Buscema, how John Buscema drew a face expression and mine, uh, my take on it. I think it has a lot to do with it being tilted more. Like here, he's his head is kind of like, huh? Am I really seeing what I think I'm seeing? Is this a mirage? And mine is, um, I don't know. He looks more, he looks more haggard. Can't quite figure out what it is, what detail uh, makes that distinction. Um, and I want to find it. I mean, that's, that's basically... The whole idea is like just to study, um, and notice what these details are. So, like, whatever. Like, if, let's say if I um, draw from something else, you know, draw from my imagination, I could use this understanding. Like, oh, it's really about the corner of the mouth or the eye, and how it's like a little bit um, more. more wide um, in terms of its height. You know, that makes it look like his eye, or the, the face expression is more shocked or surprised. You know, just understanding these things, I think kind of help um, improve drawing in general. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next panel. I don't think this is too terrible. The goal is to always try harder. So now we're going to go on to this really cool panel. Question is, where? I'm not going to do it on this page because I need it for the anatomy stream. So I'm going to do it here. And it seems to be about the same height and width. Well, it is the same width. And maybe this one's a little bit shorter. So I'm going to do some measurements here. Going to get my ruler out and see. It's about five inches 
by two and a half. Five inches by two and a half. So first I'm gonna do two and a half, just like right here. And then do five, min five inches. Let me just see if it just, yeah, it's pretty much like from end to end. draw out these boxes with the intent of um, paying attention to objects and the space between them. So it's the text box right here. And I'm paying attention to how close it is towards the frame. So this is, it's a helpful technique to um, make things a little bit more simple. You know, your your eye is focusing on a very specific area as opposed to the whole. Not to say that it's not important to look at the image as a whole, it's actually very important. But to vary it, you know, you you have these multiple tools on your tool belt and you just pull pull them out to ensure you get the the goal right. Goal being drawing the um drawing the panel accurately. So I'm quickly going to do a sketch, keeping it light. And as you can see, in the pencil, I'm not giving it death grip and I'm keeping a distance from the tip. I'm not here, you know, really pressing down on anything. I'm holding it at a distance, making sure I get a wide scope, like the vulture of, uh, of what's going on. And this is another one right here. So take a look right here. Draw out this corner, you know, to make sure that you're framing everything properly in the panel. So again, re recognizing the space difference between objects and also looking at the negative space. So rather than drawing the wing, you're drawing this triangle right here. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna draw out of this triangle. And by that nature, you're already getting the right curvature of the wing because you're just focusing on something a little bit more simple. You're not focusing on drawing a wing you're focusing on drawing a, a triangle. And you're comparing, you're trying to see like, how accurate is this line to mine? There's a slight curvature to it, so I'm gonna try to draw that. Just another tool, you know, another tool. Um, studying negative space. This is the negative space outside of the object. Um, Then we got this negative space right here, which is kind of like an eye shape, kind of looks like a fish as well, right? It's a negative space. So it, in that, um, if you guys remember, if you were here for the previous stream uh, yesterday, I was giving you guys examples of uh, how you could switch your vision to to help you ensure like, 
accuracy in your drawing. And where is it? Here we go. This was the example of it. You know, two boxes drawn exactly the same way, right? But depending on how you shadow it, it changes perspective. So you either see this right here as the front of the box, or you see this as the front of the box. See that? This is this, and this is that. But it's drawn exactly the same way. And it really is depending on your vision to recognize which is the front. Is it this? Or is it this? Same exact object. So it's just your perception being able to switch. And I encourage you guys to practice that. Try to recognize both of these um, shaded parts without shading them. Just by looking at it, being like, can I spot it? Oh yeah, there it is. Here it is. And that is your ability to just switch uh, your perception. You know, train yourself to be able to do that. And it's beneficial. It becomes beneficial. Um, the same way as it is here, rather than looking at the wing and the tree and the space in between them as like the, um, the ground, you could just associate it with something else. Like, oh, it looks like a fish. So when it, whenever you look back at the reference, your eye darts to this interesting thing that you discovered. Oh, it's, I'm going to dart back to the drawing the fish. And that allows you to make the right curves. You know, you're, it's not as intimidating. You're not looking at the entire thing and trying to draw the tree. You're trying to draw a more simple shape, something more simplified, which allows you to not be as intimidated and make the right lines actually. So this is what I did just there, drawing the fish. And also notice the difference between the neck of the bird and where the tree ends or starts, depending on how you draw it. Um, that also ensures accuracy as well. So it's not going to start here, where the gap between these two objects is going to be large, you know, to make be mindful of that. Um, so these are all just giving you guys more ways, more tools you could use to achieve accuracy. To achieve your ability to pay attention to detail. Next, I'm going to sketch out Conan. With again, understanding the space relationship between objects, the uh, far left side of the tree and where his hand is, or his arm rather. Look at the gap between it to ensure you draw it accurately, that it's not too, too far to the right the body, the entire figure is in two parts to the right. And quickly sketch out the body. The foot is kind of close to the vulture's mouth. interesting the other day actually I was like biking around my area and as I was biking I was in like this woodland woodland area um, I saw like a deer a dead deer and a bunch of vultures around it 
And this is like a forest area, you know. Um, it was just such a bizarre thing. I'd never really seen vultures actually around such areas. Like usually I would think that are like in the desert or something. Or in like more dry areas. But they were dragging this deer into the forest. That was a bunch of them, like three or four of them actually hovering around it. Even with the figure being so small, Jamasema still manages to draw like a really good uh, anatomically correct figure. Still a face there, and still some sort of face expression. Like, look at how tiny that is. And he still nails it.
trying to concentrate as much as I can um, to get this down. Because it's really challenging when you're working at that minute of a detail-oriented panel. You can easily just make things way too small or way too big in relation to each other. Also, his head is kind of like jotting outwards in disbelief, like trying to get better, better vision of what's out there in a distance. Is that a mirage? Am I seeing things? Like, it still kind of suggests that, despite being so tiny. I'm gonna see if I could like bring my head a little closer. Trying to see if maybe I could bring it up to you guys for you guys to see. Just like little details that he puts on there, like right where the forearm is. He draws this little line to indicate an ind indentation uh -huh. in between um, the upper and lower part of the arm. And it just various parts to like where the chest is, for example, to separate the chest from uh, the different parts of it. Well, it's kind of hard to see. You guys really have to view it yourselves to, to recognize it or to notice it. That's just, it just shows. It's an attestment to how much he really likes to draw. That even in cases where it's like really tiny, he still likes to put in effort He's not just like, great, an opportunity to take a shortcut. Let me just, you know, do this, this, and this real quick. Like, no, he takes his time and actually includes little things to to do it. And I commend that. I think it's very, very cool.
this is where this eraser comes into play. It's excellent at just focusing on little details, whereas the knitted eraser is more for like general areas. And another perfect thing to practice, right? Like drawing big, drawing small, drawing all these like different perspectives. Um, camera angles, face expressions, like all this from uh, practicing from comics. I remember a long time ago, I was taking drawing classes, um, life drawing classes. Like I went to this place and they had models there. You would just sit and draw from the models. And um, I was sitting there, I was drawing, and then it came to a break where the model takes a break, everybody takes a break. And I just kind of walked around and uh, looked at other people's interpretations of the model, how they how they draw what kind of work comes out of it and I just overheard some of them saying like I don't know what else to do like I don't know where else to improve and I think it's just so interesting because there's like always something to improve on it's just a, but I think the question is like when should you stop trying to and I'm wondering like what that is like is it them just really not seeing anything else aside from what they've drawn or is just them kind of giving up and that's their way of just saying uh, I don't want to try harder could be a little bit of both I don't know but I'm looking at this and I'm like man there's so much stuff to learn there's always like all these different little things to pick up on how can you say there's nothing else to do. Nothing else to learn. Feels like his foot is too big in comparison to the body. That's also such a common mistake that I see people do, like their feet are huge. It just looks like a kid who is like trying to wear his parents shoes or something
thinking about doing a stream where I just fill up pages from this uh, from the sketchbook. So like prior to closing it, like maybe doing like a closeout stream where on one of the streams I just uh, focus on filling up empty spaces, all sorts of drawings. And maybe that's best for the uh, drawing basic stream where I'm going to draw like the figures in action all over the page. Drawing hands all over different uh, blank spaces because there's so many of them. Like there's like all of this could be filled in with little drawings, you know, similar to this. Like as you guys could see doing m multiple hand drawings also around here as well. Trying to see where else, like here maybe as well. And here. All of this. Some of these I don't want to. I think um, it's going to be good to upload for you guys to check out on the Patreon page. I'm going to be doing that soon. You guys will have access to all these pages with these uh, examples of the figure on Patreon. So make sure you check that out. Um, for those of you who are tuning in from the previous stream. And um, I'm going to be uploading these examples as well. So you guys can print them out. Or you could have them on your computer if you're do doing it digitally. And just co um, copy these uh, examples. Use them as references. I highly do encourage you to um, copy it into your sketchbook so that you could flip to it whenever. So if you're not at home, if you're not, if you don't have access to your computer, but you have your sketchbook on you, you could just flip to it and remember. Oh yeah, the body is eight heads in total. Four up uh, for for the torso, and then from the groin down to the feet, it's another four heads. Um, that sort of thing. I think it'll help if you're if you're not in your um, in your work environment if you're out and about if you're sitting in uh, on public transportation if you're at work and you have the downtime you could just use them as references to keep practicing think if I had a time machine to go back in time and tell my younger self to do something, it would be exactly this. And I think everybody says that. It's like, uh, my my thing would be to say, draw. Draw as much as you can. Get yourself a book and draw from the book. Page to page, every single thing. From cover to cover. And keep drawing daily. Get used to drawing daily. And I was flipping through my sketchbook and I saw like some art that this girl did on my in my sketchbook and it was e, um, it was a Final Fantasy character the ones that have like those um, wizard hats and it was so well done like I look at it now and this is back when I was like 17 maybe 16 you know and it was like professional level I was like, whoa, you know, this still looks good. And I remember she used to draw a lot. Kind of curious to actually know what, if she's done anything with it. There's been some people who, like, I've, I've checked out um, since the last time I saw them, which is, like, in elementary school or in, like, junior high school that were artists as well. And we were, like, we would hang out and we would draw stuff and talk about drawing and characters and comics and all that sort of thing and some of them quit and I'm so upset by that because a lot of them were great like they were really good for their age 
Uh, and like I was mentioning, the fact that this person was like 16, 17, and still when I look at that, when that drawing, let me see if I could actually find it and show it to you guys because it's pretty good. Like, uh, that's pretty good, you know? She was, um, I don't know, 17, maybe 16. But that's, that's really good for that time. Um, this is like 2000, so that was like 22 years ago. Too embarrassed to show my work so I'm gonna like try to see like what other ones here's another one that she did that's pretty good you know you could see in her lines that uh, she draws a lot you know you could even see it in the hair that she's she's really nailed down certain things and in the eyes as well. It's it's pretty good. So I wonder if they actually are still drawing, if they're still doing comics. Because I know one person um, who I used to draw with all the time we used to like talk about comics i've checked in on them not too long ago and i was like dude really this is what you're doing now like you had such great skill um at such a young age like i knew this guy in junior high school and he was drawing pretty well and i think there's like let me let me pop it up Yeah, this is uh this is their work, Thunderbolts, and um, we used to just sit and draw all the different characters and stuff. And um, me and him, we worked on this together. I did the I did the shadowing. He did the penciling, and I think I've, I changed some things here and there. It was just kind of something that we did. You know, I would give him something, he would change it around and improve it on things, and then vice versa but uh but he was excellent like a lot of this stuff is his work most of this stuff i would say is his work and he really put in the time to actually draw this out and i think it's incredible for that time especially in junior high school to be able to do that and uh i looked him up nothing you know didn't didn't pursue it 
it's uh it's heartbreaking to see that it's frustrating you know because it's like you could you could have really uh created some wonderful stuff man like what are you doing so if you are accidentally watching this man get back to drawing <laughs> You should absolutely go back to it. You were like really good at drawing. Yeah, I hate seeing that. I really hate seeing when people who are like really good at it decide to go along and do something that's like purely money focused. Ugh. And I bet a lot of it had to do with his family and them trying to convince him not to do it. And just like squashed his uh, abilities. Because their dreams got squashed. It's like, would you be able to handle it if you see your kid actually achieving things that you wanted to? I mean, that's just some narcissistic parents out there, man. Just care about themselves more than they care about their their kid. there's still a little bit of work to do um i do want to perfect it i want to make it look a lot better nail down the anatomy and that really small panel you know just that figure it's it's close but i still think there's some things that i need to improve on so i'm gonna continue that but i'm gonna continue it on monday Unfortunately, guys, the schedule is going to have to change. I'm going to start only streaming in the evenings. Still going to be daily. It's going to be from 8 until 10 p.m. Um, I'm going to be doing drawing comics, and coloring comic, um, drawing comics, comics at 9 p.m., uh, drawing basics at 8. Drawing basics is going to be daily. Other streams are going to uh, alternate throughout the week. Um, check out the previous uh, broadcast where I talk about the schedule change, I talk about the Patreon um, launch, the Patreon page launch. Um, check out pa the Patreon page, see if any of the tiers interest you. There's some interesting ones out there for sure, so take a look and see. Um, and I will be back today, later at 8pm for the evening stream, where I'm going to be working on my project. And at 9pm I'm going to be coming back to John Buscema's beautiful work to color it. So tune in then. And um, if you enjoy the content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Both go a long way in helping the stream grow. Um, and I will see you guys very soon. <laughs>